quick fig jam crostini with creamy burrata and a hearty main of beef cheek ragu with pappardelle. Beef cheeks. Just think the size of your little cheeks, yeah? Imagine the size of the cow with them. And the cheek is right underneath here, yeah? Mmm. I want you to give them a really nice season with okay, salt and pepper cool. on there, please. So, beef cheeks, very cheap. A cut that takes sort of a long time to cook. Yeah. But give it a bit of love, let it cook in the oven. Mm -hmm. It comes out like That's a dream. It. A little touch of oil in the pan. What we want to do is get them really nicely coloured. Seared. Seared. Into the pan. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Lay away. See what that is? Um... Sitting at the dock of the... the beach. Bay. <laughs> Bay. <laughs> beach! And then I want the onion chunky, because we're going to cook yeah. it for, like, three, three and a half hours. So you go down, 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 and then again there and there. So it doesn't overcook. So a really good colour on the cheeks, like that. So but how do you cook these at a restaurant if they take so long? They go in the oven, literally half past six, seven o'clock in the morning. Three and a half, four hours, and we're ready for lunch. Mm. And the longer you leave them in their juices yeah. and the cooking liquor, the better. Three nice cloves of garlic. Good. Onions in and garlic in, please. Nice. Where's your baby? There oh, it is. Yes. Yeah, Get those onions and that garlic really nicely coloured. Put the cheeks back in, please. Right, red wine in. Sure. Okay, and the red wine is going to deglaze the pan. So deglaze will basically sort of rinse all that flavour off the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Okay, because that's going to make the most amazing sauce. Now you could use tomato puree, but chopped canned tomatoes will make a much better sauce. I'm going to top that with some stock. So the secret of braising is having little of the meat exposed and 90% of it submerged. See them there? Yeah. They're like little crocodile heads popping up out of the water. Turn the gas off and leave the lid just off at the end there. If we had to cover it completely, the steam hits the top yeah. of the lid and all that water comes running back like down. Like it's so. solar still. That's right. In the oven, 140, 150 for about three and a half to four hours. Good job. Boom. For pudding, I'm making one of my absolute favourite Italian desserts, panna cotta with that quintessentially Italian flavouring, espresso. Start by immersing two leaves of gelatine in cold water and leave to soak. Into a small saucepan, add caster sugar, cream, milk, sugar, and a shot of good, strong coffee. Gently bring to a simmer and remove from the hob. Squeeze out the soaked gelatine leaves and stir into the hot cream until completely dissolved. Pour your cream mixture into a jug and fill your moulds just short of the rim. Rinsing your moulds in cold water before filling will make it easier to get your panna cotta out once it's set. Leave in the fridge for at least two to three hours or overnight. To make your cinnamon hazelnut brittle, Pour caster sugar into a pan and cook over medium heat until the sugar melts to a deep golden brown. Scatter toasted hazelnuts into the caramel. Dust with ground cinnamon and leave to set at room temperature. When your panna cotta is firm, giving each mold a quick dip into boiling water should ensure a perfect stress-free exit onto the plate. Dressed with a shard of crunchy hazelnut brittle, nothing could be so deliciously elegant. Right, Captain Jack, quick run through. Panna cottas are nearly set. Beef cheeks are nearly cooked. We're going to now do the fig and burrata crostini. Oh. Okay. To take the figs, we're going to make a nice, slightly spicy fig jam. Take off the tops. Yeah. In half, and each half into three. Sugar, the touch of salt in there. Okay. We're making a jam, but we don't want it to be too sweet. And then these little babies. What are they? Ah. Oh, What's the shape? Stars. Starnies. Starnies? Taken from the aniseed plant. Yeah. And when you dry them like that, it so intensifies the flavour. Really important to count how many we put in there, okay? Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five.
five. So they're just there for the flavour and then you take That's them right. out. That's right. Secret here, let's get that caramel going. So when I hear of jam, I don't think of caramel. No, but this is a very fast jam. Caramel's starting to colour. I want you very carefully to drop the figs in there. Good. So the juice out of the figs is starting to break down the caramel. Oh, you know what that is? Me. Old sweet vinegar. I love that on my salad. You've got that sort of sweet and sour flavour. Leave that cooking for three or four minutes. Now let's slice our chipata. In Italian, crostini means little bits of toast. But it can be made out of leftover baguette, sourdough, or any crusty, open-textured bread. We're staying authentically Italian with ciabatta. Season them, and then drizzle a little touch of olive oil on there. Both sides are really important because we're going to grill the bread. Push it down. Puts a lovely really taste. Very lovely. Take it off. With the ciabatta toasted, we need to carefully extract the star anise pods from our piping hot fig jam. My right, Jack, we've got one little bugger to find. Oh, no. Go. Is it there? Yes, it is. Right. Now we've got the green light to crush. So the skin's disintegrated in that caramel. That looks so nice. While Jack carefully spreads the crostini with our hot fig jam, I can unveil the last element to our starter, the creamy Italian speciality, burrata. Our oh, little money bags. Wow. They can be delicious. This looks fun. Doesn't it? We need to season them lightly, drizzle over a little olive oil, and dust them with lemon zest. Can you imagine that? Sat there. And you tear some of that off and you stick it on top of that and mmm. Mm. Mm. Back to the main course. To match our hearty beef cheeks, I've chosen to use pappardelle. Rule number one when cooking pasta? Salt in first. Salt in first, good. Olive oil in, pasta in. Twist it round so you don't break it. Nice. Bring that back up the bowl. That's going to take about three or four minutes. Flat leaf parsley. Scrunch it up for me. Yep. And chop it. Now, wait to see oh, these wow. beef cheeks. Beauties. Mm. Look at them. Wow. They're oh, really look. soft. They're oh, very they're soft. Tiny. I want you to taste. Mmm. They're so good. Oh, Jack, you've just dribbled on your jumper. Joking. <laughs> really? Right, drain the pasta. Salt, pepper, and pasta. A little drizzle of olive oil. And I want you to put your fresh parsley. Nicely chopped. Nicely chopped. In. This is the magic bit, OK? You take a little ladle of the juice, put that at the bottom, and you put the pasta top of that sauce. Ooh. Ooh. Honestly. Oh, my gosh. Your sisters are going to love you even more now. You know that? Uh, what about when you cook this for your girlfriend one day? Uh, Just tell know. her where you got the recipe from, will you? Promise? Promise. I don't want you stealing Daddy's thunder. One. Beautiful jaw on there. Two. Beautiful jaws on there. Mm. And then the third jaw. And then you go over with the sauce. How cool is that? Delicious. You've got the burrata, and I've got the cheeks. Mm. Let's go, Billy. Oh, stop <laughs> Don't be cheeky. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> My ultimate Italian dinner. Quick fig jam crostini with creamy burrata. A main course of slow-cooked beef cheek ragu with pappardelle. And for pudding, espresso panna cotta with cinnamon hazelnut brittle. A stunning meal to bring the whole family together in the best Italian tradition. First, a hearty starter on bruschetta with ricotta and succulent griddled courgettes. For my main, I'm serving fragrant roasted beetroot and thyme risotto. But I'll be in trouble with the kids if I don't do a pudding. So I'm enlisting the help of my youngest, Tilly, to rustle up an indulgent chocolate and lime mousse with crushed raspberries. So if you unwrap the chocolate, Start breaking up in little bits. We're going to make the most amazing white chocolate mousse. Our first job is to bring half of our cream up to the boil. So what kind of cream is that in there, Dad? That is double cream, OK? So that's going to make a really nice, rich chocolate mousse. What's your favourite sort of chocolate? Is it white, milk, dark? Um, I love white and milk. 
What's yours? I absolutely love milk chocolate. Oh, that's my guilty pleasure. Is it really? Here we go. Cream in. So that goes in there. Now, you can see what's happening straight away, can't you? It's melting really quickly. It's melting really quickly, so... OK. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Alicia, your jumper's white, so you won't spot it. Yeah, and I've got a nice little snack for later. <laughs> in another bowl, add lime zest, cold cream and whisk until it forms soft peaks. The lime cuts the sort of richness of the cream and that starts to make the chocolate mousse taste a little bit lighter. Mmm, it smells really good. The lime gives it a really nice zinginess. Zinginess, you're absolutely right. Next, add to the melted chocolate mixture. And because I'm whisking, it's just getting lighter and lighter okay. and lighter. Have a little taste. Mmm. Nice? Yeah, the lime gives it a really nice taste. Tilly, I need the rest for the mousse. I need some for my tummy. No, come on. Chocolate mousse into the fridge. Our next job is to separate out three egg whites. This is where I need you at your absolute best, OK? Because to whip those whites is going to be really tough. So we'll take it in turns, 30 seconds each, OK? You go first. Ten seconds gone. Come on, Tilly. Fifteen seconds gone. Twenty seconds gone. Come on, you can do it. Ten seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. And change. Excellent. Hold the bowl. Right. No. No way! Jesus! Oh, what? Oh. Matilda! That's you can't it. walk out and You it. can't do that to me! <laughs> 30 seconds, this puny little thing, and you come with this big little machine gun. Because <laughs> that's the best way of whipping up egg whites. But why didn't I do it that way? <laughs> you start tipping that sugar in slowly. Good girl. So, <laughs> our contentious whipped egg whites will make our mousse light and airy. And when they've reached soft peaks, we can gently mix in our cooled white chocolate and cream mixture. Once the egg whites hit the cream, yeah. the chocolate sets, the egg whites keep the cream nice and fluffy, and you get this nice light mousse in the bowl. Now, I need you to crush some raspberries, please, with some fresh mint. You can Great. see all the juice coming out. Now, Take your mousse. Wow, that looks really cool. Now, look at that down the bottom there, look. A crushed raspberry. Delicious. Mint. Now, I'm going to set that in the fridge. If you could be so kind, open the door, please. Our yummy white chocolate mousse will take at least two hours to set, so we can crack on with our Mediterranean inspired vegetarian starter griddle courgette, ricotta, and mint bruschetta. For this recipe, you'll need a griddle pan, an essential piece of kit for that char grilled look. Cut thick slices of chapata bread. Drizzle both sides with olive oil. Season with a little salt and pepper. And griddle each side until toasted. Then slice a couple of courgettes diagonally into half a centimetre thick pieces. Drizzle and coat in olive oil and season with salt and pepper. Sear on a smoking hot griddle pan in batches until all the courgettes are bar marked on both sides. Next, roughly chop mint leaves and combine with creamy ricotta cheese. Spread your toasted tapata with dollops of minty ricotta and top with your seared courgette. Super simple and super tasty. Now we're going to make a delicious beetroot risotto. We need to get the shallots, just slice them in half and then just chop them like that. OK? OK. Now, have you ever made a risotto? No, I haven't, yeah. actually. Shallots, please, into the pan for Daddy. Add a sprinkle of salt and pepper, along with a couple of crushed cloves of garlic. Once you start cooking the risotto, it's really important to have your stock gently boiling away. If we're adding cold stock on top of the rice all the time, it just slows down the process. Generally, you cook it a nice, wide, flat pan. Yeah. If you cook it in a deep pan, all the rice sort of cooks at different temperatures. What stock is that in there, Dad? Because that's a vegetable stock. Yeah, because okay. you can't have different stocks if it's more vegetarian, can you? No, you can't have chicken stock. I made that mistake once, putting beef stock in a vegetarian soup. 
Did you? No, I okay. didn't. Matilda. Are you sure? I'm positive. I'm joking. Fry up time. How nice does that smell? It smells delicious. Rice in? That's a bit of a different rice. And this is El Borio rice. It's a perfect rice for risotto. Now, it's really important to sear the rice. If we were just to put the stock in without sweating off the rice, it goes all starchy. So keep on stirring for Daddy. Is this going to make a flambe? No flambe on the risotto. To go with our deep red beetroot theme, I'm adding red wine, followed by the first ladle of stock to get things started. Now we're off. Wow, it's giving it a cloudy sort of look. What's happening to the stock? The stock is reducing down and the rice is sucking it in. That's right. So the rice is actually getting nice and plump. When a risotto is live, when it's like this now, we can't stop cooking it. We have to cook it all the way. OK, ready for the next ladle? I'm ready. Good girl. Here we go. Ladle in. So we have to make this for literally 20, 25 minutes. And we're nursing it all the way. Beetroots. Peel them. Rub them with a little bit of salt and sugar. Yeah. And a little bit of aged balsamic vinegar in there. Roasted them. I'm going to grate my parmesan. How's that rice doing? The rice is doing good. Now, that is exactly where you want to be now, look. Look at that nice, glossy, textured rice. So beetroot, I want you to put two-thirds of the beetroot in there for me, saving one-third for the top. Good. Sprinkle the parmesan in there for me, please, all over. Nice. It's like it's snowing. Again. And then we're just going to get some nice butter in there. The butter gives the risotto a really nice gloss. Look at that. Beautiful. Let that come down. Let it come down first. All right, get your spoon in there now, for Daddy. Beautifully, there you go. Good. Wonderful. Shake it. Risotto should be like lava. It just flows out. And then the rest of the beetroot on top. And then we finish. And then some extra virgin olive oil on top. I'll pick up the bruschetta. You take that to the table. OK? Let's go, Danny. Mmm. This is my ultimate vegetarian dinner. Delicious courgette ricotta and mint top bruschetta. An unctuous roasted beetroot and thyme risotto. And for put, an indulgent white chocolate and lime mousse with fresh crushed raspberries.